that I'm not talking about a fringe minority or a silent majority, but the silenced majority, silenced by the mainstream media. The media today represents a minority elite. These all have to be challenged, and many people are doing it. It's Michael Franti here. This is Amy Goodman with Rochester. Rochester Indian Media. Hi, Dawn with Rochester Indie Media's Indie TV, and we have a treat today. We're here with Frank Lopez from Submedia.tv, The Stimulator. So we're going to figure out who The Stimulator is, because this is the face behind The Stimulator. Here it is. Hello, everybody. Hello, Rochester. <laughs> Thanks for coming, Frank. Thanks for having Rochester. me. Rochester. This is so, so ex yeah. exciting. It is exciting. All right, so tell us. Like, you know, we want to know all about you, the, the, the project, uh, the stimulator. How did this come about, and uh, what is it? How do you explain it to people? It's hilarious. It's fun. It's political. We know that, but in your words. Actually, the name of the show, it's, um, it's The End of the World as We Know It, and I Feel Fine, inspired by an REM song of the same title. And it's... Um, End of the world news, you know, lots of natural disasters, um, high oil prices, food riots, um, but also news from the front lines of the resistance, people who are doing eco-activism, people who go to protest, people who do direct action, and uh, followed by usually a musical break and then ending with commentary and or an interview with a person that I really admire. Mm -hmm. Now, so you do it all. I mean, you do everything. The editing is amazing. Um, the, the style that you have is very unique. It's just uh, funny. It's a compilation of so many things, like you're saying, interviews with people, but you use other people's footage. How do you pull all this stuff together to make this happen, and how often do you do it? It's a lot of work. Um, I was doing it, when I first started, I, I had the goal of do one a week, and uh, I realized that that was impossible. And it was, it was, um, it was, it, it was not impossible in the sense that I, I couldn't have done it, but it's just that I set the goal that it was just going to take me a day. So if I could do the show from beginning to end in a day, then I would do one a week. But what happened was that I, um, I don't like to really put out half-ass stuff out there. So then one day became two, it became two and a half, it became three. So it really takes me about three days uh, to do one show. So how do I do it? Um, I have a laptop, I have a um, digital video camera, and I have a high-speed internet connection, and that's basically my tools. Um, I, the process is I, um, I write the news, I mean I basically do my research, I figure out what's happening that week, and then I write the script in which I add my own little twang in there, lots of cursing, lots of uh, calling uh, politicians' names, insulting all the people that piss me off. And that never offends anybody, right? <laughs> oh, no, no. I, just, I do only get a couple, couple hundred emails a year of people who are, who are either very, very happy that I do this or very... No, actually, no. There's not that many people who are offended by the cursing, actually. But it's attention-grabbing, right? So oh, absolutely. It's, it's a hook. Yeah. It's, 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 it's a way... Well, it's a way... I mean, it's, it's, it's my true personality. Like, you know, I'm, I'm a little more careful today because we're on TV or whatever, but... But, you know, that's really how I talk, and uh, I very much um, spend my youth listening to hip-hop, and so my language kind of evolved into, like, a more hip-hop uh, parlance. Well, that's why you've been compared to um, a more radical John Stewart. You're funny, but uh, a little bit more vulgar and extreme or something, and it just really catches a different audience and, and makes people interested in topics maybe they wouldn't otherwise be interested in. For sure, for sure. I mean, I think there's a lot of people out there uh, in, in America who have been concerned about, you know, running out of oil or, run, or you know, high energy prices or, or food security or things like that who don't really run in like, I mean, I'm certainly an anarchist, I'm a leftist, and a, a lot of these folks who are interested in these type of things are kind of more on the center, center right spectrum, and so they can relate to the things that concern me because it's the same things that concern them, but then I can, I can, I can just, you know, 
sucker punch them into like hearing about the history of ACT UP and like and, and the queer movement like and you know and they see that there are people just like them who are just fighting for what they want and like and it's a great it's a great way to like get people interested in, in, in other issues as well. Mm -hmm. So give us um, like one or two uh, shows that you've done that have really made an impact you know both for yourself and for your audience that stand out. So far the show that has received the most views is uh, an interview that I conducted with Derek Jensen and um, and it's a little frustrating because uh, I, when I interviewed Derek, it was not the best um, situation. It was, he was about to give a talk. I didn't have a tripod, and it's all handheld, and I white balance wrong. And but you know, he knows he knows his spiel. He knows what he's talking about. So for a lot of people, to hear somebody say civilization is not sustainable, civilization cannot go on. It's it's huge. It's like for them, it's like well, I've been feeling this, but you know, like this guy is actually saying it, you know. So, and we can seg into 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 my film uh, that I'm working on on Derek later, but but I, I feel like I want to just spread the, his ideas, and and that was a great way to like, you know, curse a whole lot at the beginning of the show, talk about people's ideas about you know saving the world and ec ecologically, and then. This guy comes in and say like all those ideas are wrong. How did you get an interview with him? Was it a phone interview or a live interview? And how do you want to talk about to people who want to make media and be independent media makers? Is it a hard process to you know contact people that maybe you're inspired by or you want to learn more about their ideas? And how is that for you? You know, seriously, like most most of these folks, they don't get interviews. Most of these folks are trying to promote their book. They're trying to get their ideas out there. And they, um, and, and, and you know, the mainstream media is not going to touch them. So, you know, they might do phone interviews on radio or anything like that. But if, if, if somebody has is, is doing these a decent show, even if it's just on the internet, these folks would love to talk to them. I, I really, I was blown away how easy it was to set these things up. For instance, uh, um, I mean, I knew Derek before, so this is not really the best example. But he was, he happened to be coming to Vancouver for a talk. And I just basically said, I, I'm going to go see your talk. I want to tape your talk, and I want to I want a 10 minute interview with you. And he was like, Cool. And that's that's all it took, mm -hmm. just you know, finding his email online and just and just doing it. Um, sometimes I want to interview somebody who's not in Vancouver, where I am based, and it's um, a matter of explaining to the person if you can get a video camera and you can frame yourself here and put the camera on a tripod, and if you don't have a mic be as close to the camera as possible and make sure that you had good sound. Mm -hmm. Then I email you the, the, uh, the questions, you interview yourself, and then you, email, you, you mail me the tape or you send me the digital video electronically. And, uh, and a lot of times I'm just able to interview people live um, from a different location like that way. So, I mean, it's, it's, <coughs> it's, it was, it was, it, it's a very low-budget show. It's, it's a very no-budget show, and, 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 uh, and I can make it look like I have all these you know, satellite feeds and all that stuff. When you know, sometimes it's just snail mail. Sometimes it's just getting the tape in the in the mailbox. It's creative. It's funny. We love it. Um, when we come back, we're going to talk more about um, your work and the end of the world as we know it. Is it the end of the world as we know it now that Obama's been elected? And what's going to happen to your media and your program? Is it going to? Is there going to be as much material uh, to work with? And uh, what your perspective on that is? And also your new documentary from the RNC and the DNC uh, Republican and um, Democratic National Conventions. It's a great documentary and you're on tour with it now. We're going to talk about it. Stay tuned. Rochester in TV. I'm going to show you how to escape from a set of professional handcuffs, just like the famous escape artist Houdini did. This is for entertainment only and should never be used to escape from the police. It's the end of the world as we know it. I feel fine. Good morning, slaves, and welcome to another edition of It's the End of the World as We Know It and I Feel Fine, the show where shit slinging is still legal. I am your host, the Stimulator. And if you're not sure who owns America, listen to this. We need to offshore drill for oil and natural gas. We need to drill here, and we need to drill now. Like all compromises, this one has its drawbacks. It does include a limited amount of new offshore drilling. Both presidential candidates have sucked at big X on cock by supporting oil drilling in Alaska, no matter how many ecosystems get destroyed. Yep, the corporations already own this election. 
So no matter who wins, you lose. But you knew that already. We're back. Rochester, Indy.